method, you swing it around, you use log equals exponent. As long as you have one that works for you, it doesn't matter to me what you use. Um, you tell me if you have any questions on these. These were just confirming the opposite way. You're going to confirm exponentially that, that it was true. If you didn't have anything to solve, you just had to convert them back and forth. And then this put into a log and um, how that would work. So everybody was okay with these? You can go back and forth? Yeah. Yeah? No questions? Okay. That usually isn't so bad. Again, converting back to the log, your base of your exponent is the same base of your log. So that's an A? Yeah, I'm sure that's an A. I thought that was an A. I just couldn't see how my paper. Mm -hmm. Uh, whatever you put it is fine. Whatever you made it is fine. It looks like it looks like one of those fancy A's, but whatever you put it is, is, is the same thing. It doesn't matter. Um, and then you're going to use your definition of, of log to evaluate with that your calculator. Just plug it in. Um, and since you're without your calculator, you're going to have to flip it back to an exponential equation. So flip this around, p to the x power, whatever you make this, drop them both to the same power, and then x is equal to 4. No. Okay. Um, same with this guy. It, plug it in, flip it around. If you want to take this, get rid of your fraction, use your negative exponent, and then set your exponents equal to each other. I don't know where that's Oh, there's my x equals 4. Somehow it's all the way over here. Good? I don't want to dwell if, if everybody's good with this. All right. Stating your transformation. Take your basic characteristics off your core graph. And if it's easier for you, move this 4 over here. You still need the negative out there, but you can put the 4 here but that still gets a reflection. When the y is going from positive to negative, it's a reflection in the x. Jordan? How did you do the x-intercept? The x-intercept, you plug in a zero for y, and now you should be able to flip this guy around. So when you get to this point, plug in a zero for the x-intercept the same way we always do, and a y-intercept, x is equal to zero. Right now we have no y-intercept, so we didn't bother doing those. So that's where your asymptote is right now, unless we moved it over. Yeah, what did you do with after you did the 4 equals the log to the x? Alright, so we isolate the log. Yeah. So I moved the 4 over, divided by a negative 1. If it's easier, flip this around. And now go let this 2 to the 4 <laughs> equals x. I, if it's easier, flip it this way. So that your log is on the left and the answer is on the right. That might be easier to look at. And, <coughs> excuse me, confirm it on your calculator. Do a zero. Check in calc number two, do the zero on it. And it'll confirm it on your calculator. Question. Uh, do you have to do the intercept algebraically? Yes, always. We always do our intercept algebraically. Right. When we did the x on this, I didn't have to do the x algebraically because we couldn't do the log. So I said, as soon as we do the last, then everything is on the same That Throughout the course, we always solve those algebraically. You can confirm them on your calculator, which is the nice part. Okay, again, if you want to put the 3 over here, just make it a plus 3 over here. There's your vertical shift up. Find your x-intercept again. Plug in y for 0. We didn't change the domain at all, so the y-intercept is still not there. <coughs> and confirm it on your calculator. Confirm them there. Do a zero and make sure it's there. Good? Okay. Stop me if you have any questions. Here's another one. If you want to move the two, make it minus two at the end. You have a horizontal shift to the left opposite way, then you have a vertical shift down. So your x-intercept again, plug in your 0 for y, and solve it. Work your domain and your range from your original one. 
this again, remember we did the domain restriction yesterday? We said it has to be your domain for your regular thing is from zero to infinity. So therefore, this has to be greater than zero. Set that greater than zero and find your domain. That's, another, that's a nice way to, to find your domain first. Or take your original domain and subtract three. Do it the way we, you know, we did before. Either way is fine with me. So I took this equation and I set it equal to zero. So I added the two, right? So I said eight to the second power equals x plus three. Whatever this is, yes. Yeah. Turn it around if it's easier. So eight to the second power, eight squared equals x. If you don't find it using your, you don't even bother changing your screen, just go to the table. Go to your table, start at 61, and see if that's where your zero is. It's a good way to confirm it. Again, you had a horizontal shift to the right one unit, and try to do these without your calculator, because you're going to have to try to do them without. I think it's much easier to do the log without your calculator than it is with your calculator. No? So you're shifting to the right one, and then your vertical shift up one. The shift to the right is going to change your domain and your asymptote. Your asymptote is also going to move one over. Where's your asymptote? Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it probably got cut off at this page. Something happened to this file because it must have cut this off. So add one. Whatever this happens to be. Okay, these guys. Go ahead. I said, can you leave it at that or? No, just make it one. One. Or just, or just convert it to a decimal. Okay. Um, actually, you should leave it like probably like this. Like just. You can leave it as a mixed number. Yeah, or just, or just make it. Keep, don't convert it to a decimal because it doesn't convert. We want an exact value. Don't give it to me like that. These guys, um, use your properties. Use the properties that I gave you yesterday. Remember on the LN, the base is E. So if I gave you the log of 1 equals 0, you would say 10 to the 0 equals 1. So in LN, the base is E. E to the 0 equals 1. Anything to the 0 power, 1. You're just confirming that this is true. These are your properties that we went over yesterday. It's nice to be able to identify them. B to the 1 equals E. And these guys too, E, here's your base E. E to the 1 half. This guy is also, when you have a square root and you want to get an exponent out of it, a square root, the exponent is 1 half. So convert that and we're going to look at those today when we do the properties of your log. Convert it, and you'll see that it was true. You didn't have anything to solve. You just had to show that it was the exact. Everybody was good with that? Get used to those properties. The one that you'll probably use the most is when L and E cancel out. Probably use that one the most. Okay, again, E to that mess over there, mm -hmm. to that mess over there equals 9. Um, use your properties again. And today we're going to also see what happens to your exponents when your exponents come down. But L and E cancel out. Or E to the X, whichever way you do this, E to the X equals E squared, so set your exponents together. Today, We'll also learn that when we bring this down and then L and E will cancel out, we'll find a shortcut to that. We'll, we'll do your rules. Again, E to the X, there's a negative here. Be careful, it's to the negative. Um, and L and an E, we saw yesterday that was one of the rules. That's the rule that you'll use the most. 
is that they cancel out. They're inverses of each other. to go over change your base again. Um, you have a couple of ways you can do this. In your calculator, you have a log base. If you have an 84 or above, you have the log base. I'm fine with that. If not, you have a line here, especially with the 83s, you don't have the log base formula. So convert it back to a base 10. The one above the line stays above the line. The one below the line stays below the line. It works out the same. Um, so just so that you can convert to base 10. And we kind of talked about this yesterday. And you would put that whole thing in instead of... Well, you can't... If, if you're in your calculator, your log is base 10. Your log that you, that you save your log is base 10. If you have the 83 calculators, you don't have a log base formula in here. The, the 83s don't. The 84s do. So if you're going to have to do this and you, you hit log, this is base 10. Yeah. So just convert it. So just do this divided by this. Oh, okay. And that gives you, you convert it to log base 10. Now if you have the log base one, then you're fine. If you, if you come here, oh, oh, you, you're fine doing this. Oh, so that's only if you don't have the... If you don't board. have an 84, oh, okay. then the 83s do not have the log base formula. So then you're going to have to do that. Okay? Okay. So everybody's okay with that. All right. Here's your three basic rules that we used from last year. Um, same rule. A product rule, a quotient rule, and a power rule. Um, i like to add one more. And that's the square root rule, to get the square roots or cube roots or whatever it is back to an exponent before you hit the power rule. But since logs are exponents, they work just like exponents. When you're multiplying your exponents, or when you're multiplying less variables, what do you do to the exponents? You add them. So logs have the same rule. When you're multiplying, you're going to turn it into an add. Okay. When you're dividing, what do you do to your exponents when you divide like variables? You subtract. So when you have a quotient, you're going to turn it into a subtract. And your power rule is the one we probably use the most. Is to get this exponent down. And we bring it out in front. Um, usually that's the best thing we can do when we have a variable in your exponent. Um, there's one more, and I call it a root rule. Because sometimes you get this. So what you want to do first is remember to convert your square root, cube root, whatever it is, to an exponent. This is really a 2 here and a 1 here. So an easy way to remember this is, this is inside of this thing here. It goes under. This one stays with the 1, and then this goes underneath it. So if you have a cube root, what will your exponent be? 1 over 3. If you have a fourth root, then, oh, one, over one over 4. But then would, um, then would you take that exponent and bring it back down? And then you use your power rule. Okay. Yep. Like I, like I like to throw this, root, this rule in right here, right before your power rule. Because what happens is sometimes kids forget to convert the radical. Okay. If I gave you ln square root x to the third, what would it be? What would your exponent be? 3 over 2. Good. So convert your radical sign first, and then use your power rule and bring it down. Do you guys remember these from last year? Yes. The rules? Yeah. Great. Um, they help us when we go to solve equations and we solve the problems and stuff. We can either separate it or we can bring it back. So today, all we're going to do is go over some of these rules again. And I gave them to you, so we're either going to expand them or condense them. Same thing. 
and then we'll work on solving equations using them. So the first thing we say is, and if it's a log base 10, you don't need to show the 10. You can if you like, but you don't need to. So what's being done here? Multiplying. Multiplying. So when you multiply your exponents, your, your light bases, what are you doing to your exponents? Adding them. So this turns into your product rule. We're going to turn this into an add. So this separates these. No different than you did last year. As I said in the beginning, most of this is exactly the same as what you did in Algebra 2. It just, the second time around, it does start to make a little bit more sense. And now, scan, is there anything else we could do to this? Exponent. We're going to bring down our exponent. It just belongs to that term. Okay. The regents love these two because they would have you reduce it down and then say, like, log 2 is equal to n, and log 3 was equal to m, and you had to come up with a little expression. The regents love these as well. Okay, what do we do for a divide? A quotient rule? Subtract. So undo the last thing you would have done. The last thing you would have done to this, you would have plugged in the x, you would have did the square root, and then you would have divided. Undo that first. The ln and the log work the same exact way. Do that first. Then what? Square root. Square root. So this becomes what? So this whole thing to the one half. Then what? Bring the exponent down. Bring the exponent down. Just in front, just to this guy. Keep this one in parentheses, this argument. And that's the best you can do. Okay. This is very similar to exactly what you did last year. And then we work the opposite way. We condense. So when you condense, the first thing you want to do, before you can make your logs come into one log statement or your LNs come into one, they can't have anything in front of them. So the first thing you want to do is get rid of these guys. And this came from this exponent. And right, I heard you say square root. This came over here. And now, when I added, what was I doing? Multiplying. Multiplying. So I'm going to combine this, take out one log, and this is your product. And we said this was your square root. The logs and the LNs work the same way. The LNs are just your natural logs. In fact, if you do this in college, most of the time, probably 95% of the time, all they use is LNs. They don't even use logs. Because everybody can use an LN. But an E-base must use LN. It can't use logs. So LN is the common factor there. So the second one, how would I start this? Move the two. Good. Get rid of that two first. I'm subtracting. Dividing. Good. So bring out your LN. And just read it left to right the same way you would normally do it. Good. Okay. Not a lot for these. Okay, that's all that there is, right? Yeah. So if you want, you can get started on your homework and probably finish, finish.